Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we are going to be taking a look at a band of individuals who have been less than focused on in modern times, being the Seven Warlords of the Sea. And whatever has become of this institution now, these figures are directly linked with the lifeblood of One Piece, having driven a plethora of arcs and even entire sagas. So we are going to honor this gaggle by doing a classic One Piece ranking of every warlord that has ever been featured in the series. And how are we ranking them, you ask? Well, by the only metric that can even come close to any sort of empirical judgment being a vote. And as such, I put up a community poll to ask all of you to vote for your favorite warlord, which received over 15,000 responses, which is amazing. And I'm hoping statistically relevant. So we are going to be making our way through all 11 known seven warlords of the sea here today. But before we get into it, we're also going to be playing another one of our strange channel games here today, because I want you to guess in advance where a certain crocodile is going to fall on this ranking. So go ahead and choose any placement from one to 11. But if you are wrong, then as punishment, you will need to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, which will also grant you regular One Piece content uploaded straight into your YouTube feed, which is pretty nice, I promise. But yes, let's see if you can correctly predict just how popular Mr. Crocodile is. What I can tell you right off the bat is that he is not in dead last because that position belongs to Edward Weevil, who managed to amass a fairly pitiful 45 votes. 45 out of, well, over 15,000. Yeah, it's not great. And Weevil being in last place doesn't surprise me, not at all. What does surprise me though, is that there are actually 45 people in existence on this planet who claim that he is their favorite warlord. And I guess to be fair, this could easily change in the future and those 45 people could be time travelers. But right now, Weevil is at a massive disadvantage compared to every other character on this list because he hasn't really done anything or at least not anything that we've seen. I guess what I will say for Weevil is that he holds a whole lot of promise, very much seeming to inherit a degree of the terrifying raw power that his alleged father Whitebeard was well known for. He is a very strange player in the game of One Piece though, and as this story very much rapidly approaches towards some sort of endgame, Weevil's role in everything is very, very unclear. So there is this nice air of mystery about him at the very least that the other warlords or most of the other warlords don't really have at this stage. But then again, he also has quite a left field design to say the least, highly polarizing, and the mixture of all of the above is quite naturally going to land Weevil in dead last. And continuing aboard the left field design train in 10th place, we have Gecko Moria, with a frankly underrated 147 votes. And I say underrated because no, Moria has never been my favorite character. In fact, he's one of my least favorite. I personally think he's unappealing on almost every level with the sole exception of his past, the very idea of which is infinitely fascinating. And I would read a Gecko Moria prequel in an instant. At the same time though, I thought that Moria had a lot more support out there, even amongst all the few Grand Fleet members than was demonstrated here. I mean, I get it. He's another very polarizing design, as well as a character who was the helm of a very tricky arc, being Thriller Bark, which suffers greatly from its general placement in the series, sandwiched by the Water 7 Saga and the Sabadi arc, both of which are just so memorable and impactful, so it's pretty hard for Moria to stand out here. And where Moria does make his presence known, whether it be in Thriller Bark, Marineford, or in much more recent times, I guess he's just underwhelming. So my deepest apologies to hardcore Moria fans, or like 147 of you out there, but Moria's legacy of failure will indeed continue here today. So moving into ninth place, and we have a slight step up in vote count, it will be Marshall D. Teach, AKA Blackbeard, who managed to zehaha his way into the hearts and minds of 358 people. And I suppose there could be any number of reasons for this. Blackbeard is a bit of an enigma, not just in the series, but also when trying to box him into things like this. He's a really weird guy because he's been a part of three separate groups. You know, he's a member of the worst generation, a former warlord of the sea, and a current emperor. But in each and every case, he's kind of an outlier. You know, he was a very late addition to the established supernova group, turning them into the worst generation. He was only very briefly a warlord before betraying the world government. And as an emperor, he just doesn't quite carry the same feeling as Whitebeard, Big Mom, Kaido, and probably even Shanks. And I think that's always going to leave Blackbeard in a bit of a void with polls like this, but he does seem to have something of a solid fan base, which is quite impressive for a character so traditionally unpopular. Kind of like Weevil, though Blackbeard's time is still very much yet to come. So a few years from now, this result may look very different. But for now, he is a nine. A nine out of 
lots. Big leap forward now with number eight and we find ourselves a whale shark by the name of Jinbei with a total of 905 votes. So not the most popular, but certainly not the least either. And Jinbei is one of those characters who is perpetually growing on me and has been ever since his introduction in Impel Down. It did actually take me quite a long while to warm up to the whale shark, just as it took him quite a long while to actually, you know, join the Straw Hats. But looking back on things, Jinbei is kind of the perfect warlord. He is a staunchly honorable pirate who aligned himself with the world government for the good of his people. Kind of like Boa Hancock, just without Hancock's streak of cruelty. But Jinbei was a very solid force of balance, acting as something of a mediator between not only fishermen and humans, but also pirates and the world government. At face value, he is probably the only warlord who actually did what the position was publicly intended to be. One slight problem with ranking him on a list of warlords though, is that we as readers and watchers never really got to experience Jinbei in that position. By the time we did finally meet him, he was stripped of his warlordness. And so he's just not really the first thought many would have when this entire concept turns up in conversation. Oh well, poor fish. Now in seventh place with a mere 82 more votes than Jinbei, I dare say we have Bartholomew Kuma, a man who was the perfect warlord exclusively from the perspective of the world government, that is, a good cyborg slave boy who is hinted to have had an incredibly tragic past. One that I am both eager and quite apprehensive to eventually learn about because I know that there will be tears. But Kuma also happens to be another one of those historically unpopular characters doing quite terribly in the official polls conducted by Weekly Shonen Jump. And that is something that always, always surprises me because he's embedded into pretty much every great faction of One Piece. You know, he was introduced as a warlord working for the world government, but having come from the famed realm of piracy and even the king of his own nation. And then of course he was revealed as a revolutionary. I mean, there is no one else in this series who can claim to be as closely associated with the three great factions of One Piece, being the revolutionaries, the world government and pirates. And I'm sure that Kuma will have his time in the spotlight at some stage. However, that is not today. And today has earned him a mighty seventh place. Seven out of 11, which, eh, look, it's not so great. So moving on to number six, we have Sir Crocodile. And ding, 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 if you guessed sixth place for Crocodile, then congratulations. But if you guessed any other number, then you need to pay up and subscribe to the Grand Line Review. So welcome to the Grand Fleet. It is a pleasure to have you. But of every result on this list, I think Crocodile shocks me the most. I was honestly expecting him to be somewhere in the top three, probably not first or second, but Crocodile is just such a classic face of One Piece. However, I guess he's just been a bit left in the dust for maybe too long now. Having made extraordinarily minimal appearances in the entire New World era, which has left room for many others to take the stage. I love Crocodile though. He's one of my favorite characters, full stop. But then again, I am an old man and I do have great nostalgia for going through the days of Alabasta, which is always going to be a tough task for any new material to trump. However, a whopping five characters did beat Crocodile and they beat him quite comfortably, I might add. One of which is Boa Hancock, the pirate empress who scored a very impressive, almost 1600 votes to land her in fifth place. Impressive, but not too shocking considering Hancock is very consistently ranked in the top 10 characters of One Piece in general. So she has a pretty incredible following that I'm not quite sure I understand. I mean, I do like her, I really like her, especially her bizarre quirks with puppies and baby seals and the like. But the whole doting on Luffy stuff does get a bit much for me at times. Regardless, Bella Hancock is the pirate empress and a true force to be reckoned with. So it is nice to see her breaking into the top five here today. But in fourth place, we now find one Buggy D Clown with a pretty sizable vote increase, almost totaling 2000, almost. Not quite. But what is not to like about Buggy? It's always fun to watch someone completely incompetent just continue to fail upwards, and I'm hoping that he will eventually find his way into being one of the Emperors of the Sea. And that may be quite possible, as Oda has once stated that Buggy was his favorite villain, although this was quite some time ago and his opinion has since changed. Even so, Buggy is an inseparable feature of One Piece, a character who will always hold relevance, whether it be great or small in some capacity. And I do have to say of every wallet on this list, Buggy is by far the funniest and most expressive. And as such, it's always a good time when Buggy happens to be on a page or on screen. So, you know, yeah, just go ahead and take your popularity, Mr. Clown. Now in third place though, we have a more cool dude bruh being Trafalgar Law, a man who will probably never rank outside of the top three of any list he so happens to be on. What I do need to point to though, is that he really didn't defeat Buggy by all that much, just over a hundred votes. So it looks like there is some serious competition at play here for the bronze medal. And if I ever redid this 
Paul in the future, then I think Law could very easily fall to the clown. But I also don't really know what to say about Law that I haven't stated elsewhere at great length. I mean, he's one of Oda's finest design characters without question from an aesthetic standpoint, and he has a captivating history and personality to back it up, a true phenomenon of the series. Not quite enough of a phenomenon to be a threat to the top two on this list though, with our second place finisher, Don Quixote Doflamingo, being wildly ahead with an almost 800 vote gap which is quite insane, but then again, Doflamingo is arguably the warlord of One Piece. Everything that Crocodile represented in the classic era, Doflamingo took and evolved in the new world, becoming one of the most well-loved antagonists in the entire series. And it's very rare that I meet someone who does not like Doflamingo. I mean, not so much personally, because the string boy is a pretty massive prick, but he plays that role so, so well that it's difficult not to admire that in the story. And I actually shudder to think what Dress Rosa would have been like with a lesser villain like, say, Gecko Mori. There are just so very few characters in One Piece who are capable of shouldering mega arcs, and Doflamingo happens to be one of the better examples. In fact, with the amount of people I've met who take issue with both Big Mom and Kaido, Doflamingo may in fact be the best example. However, he is certainly not the most popular warlord because that honor will be bestowed upon our number one finisher, who is Dracul Mihawk, the only character who managed to pass the 3000 vote mark in this poll, an undisputed cool guy extraordinaire. Mihawk has been a truly dominant presence in One Piece ever since the glory days of Baratier. He was our first experience of real power in the series, and he kind of still remains the pinnacle of power to this day, seemingly unreachable by our main characters, almost 1,000 chapters into the story. In fact, Mihawk's only problem in this world is that there is no one capable of capturing his interest. He is a very lonely vessel in search of a challenge that simply does not exist, at least not yet. But as such, it is no surprise that he has gone on to dominate this list here as well. Yet another achievement to add to the great pile of Mihawk grandeur. And there you have it, all 11 Seven Warlords ranked by you wonderful Grand Fleet members. Please do let me know if there are any other groups you'd like to see polled because I really do enjoy finding out what it is you guys love. But speaking of, what do you guys think? Please do leave your thoughts in the comments below or even join my Discord server. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, then please do go and check out some of my other content or even subscribe to the channel for more glorious One Piece business uploaded straight into your YouTube feeds. But for now, this has been the Ground Line Review and I'll see you next time.